like I'm at an AA meeting or something. Yeah. <laughs> You're familiar with that. <laughs> yeah. we, just tell us, what, I don't know when we're supposed to start. Oh, I guess she's going to start. exhibition for our post-war and contemporary photographs exhibition. Oh, I'm just naturally loud. <laughs> <laughs> Still? OK. After the talk, we'll have a short um, little tour throughout the exhibition, so please stay for that. And then also come back on Thursday to bid in the pieces in the actual um, exhibition. So I just wanted to introduce our two speakers today. First, Andrea Blanche, who uh, began her career in fashion photography under the tutelage of Richard Avedon and was really one of the first women to be taking part in the mostly male-dominated fashion photography industry. She also teaches at the International Center for Photography and is also the editor of Musée Magazine. It's a magazine that's really on the vanguard of um, the intersection of film and photography and so I thought that she would be a great person to talk to Norman Reedus who most of you may know from his acting in The Walking Dead, which certain members of this department are embarrassingly <laughs> obsessed with. But you may not know about his photographs. And so that's why we're here today, to learn a little bit more about your work in photography, sure. which you've been exhibiting internationally for the last couple of years. So without further ado, Andrea Blanche and Norman Reedus. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. OK. Uh, I'd like to begin with a quote from Bette Midler <laughs> uh, regarding your first photography book, The Sun's Coming Up Like a Big Bald Head. She says, your work is capricious, brutal, beautiful, sexual, vulnerable, playful, and bewitching. I love her. Already. Not bad, yeah, right? Not bad at all. Okay. So, which begs me to ask the question. Who are your influencers? Uh, Joe Peter Wicken, I like a lot. Um, you know, there was a there was a time I lived in Los Angeles, and um, you know, I was I, I wasn't doing so much photography, but I was, uh, you know, living in a garage, I'm building sculptures, and I'm got babies torn apart, and I was that guy forever. Um, there was a, a group that I met, uh, Reza Abdo, and they were in a. a a performance, a theater performance group uh, called, uh, based around a club called Club, can I say this, Club Fuck. And <laughs> <laughs> so I start the morning off right. Um, but a lot of that imagery that, that came with that group uh, sort of influenced the photography, to be honest. Oh, and how, what age were you when that was happening? 17, 18, something like that. Oh, because I wanted to ask you, how did your art school education, starting at the age of 14, uh, evolve into taking pictures? Art school education? You well, your high school, you took a class in high school? Well, I, that's how I originally started. I mean, you, you take classes, you know, you, um, you know, you learn how to develop your own pictures, and you, you go straight to the graveyards, and you do that, you know. Um, uh, that kind of got me going, but I, I really, really didn't follow photography so much back then. I was more uh, uh, doing sculptures and, and you know, with rock and wood and metal and stuff like that. And as as the acting work and the traveling started taking off more, uh, that's when I photography seemed to they kind of fit together for, for me. You, know? you mean downtime? No, I, I don't have any downtime to be honest. Uh, <laughs> Just the traveling and get, getting to see locations and things that I wouldn't have normally seen, like, you know, stuff like this. You know, that's in St. Petersburg. That's a, uh, a priest that I, that I met. Just interesting people in interesting places and, and uh, documenting that stuff and ha spending time with these people. Um, Who's that? that? That is from a John, um, uh, a John Carpenter film. And he is one of the performance artists that he had on the film, and he and I became friends. It, you can't really tell in this photograph, but he had he had he has wings that are chopped off at the base of the wings on his back, and he's blue, 
But this guy was so expressive, and he and I hung out so much that uh, I kept stealing him and doing portraits of him everywhere, which I think pissed John off. But uh, I, I just, th this guy was just fully committed to everything, and, and we hit it off. There's, there's a, I don't know if there's another one in here. There's a, a girl that's covered in blood that I brought into mm. my trailer and, um, and, and took portraits of her inside my trailer, which the Teamsters got super upset because I covered the trailer in blood. They were very upset. But, but traveling and getting to see things and meeting these people uh, and sort of having a background with theatrics kind of helps uh, us become friends and make stuff. Uh, you say that you like to photograph, I quote, monsters uh, to find the lost person inside. Is that what draws you to it? I, I kind of, and same with acting work, I, I kind of like uh, the contradiction. I like, I like, you know, devils crying in the corner and I like angels, you know, fucking you up and stabbing you in the back. I kind of... I kind of like the contradiction to it. And, and sometimes people tell me I do that with photography. I, I take a grotesque image and find something beautiful in it, which I didn't know I was doing until everyone kept telling me I was doing that. Um, okay, well you say that acting and photography is very different. I've read. It's, you know, it's, it's taking pictures not so much, displaying pictures way different. Um, you know, it, you can take pictures and put them up on a wall and go hide in the corner and have a drink. The, the acting thing is your face, it's your voice, it's your eyes, it's your hair, it's how you, how you stand. It, it, it's, uh, the critique involved with acting is a little more brutal, I think, sometimes. Well, okay, that's something I'd like to get into. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I was going to ask you how your acting informs your photography. Um, you know, it's, I think if you, if you can capture moments in both and you're happy with the moments, um, it's a success, you know. Um, uh, one is more personal than the other in, in the fact that you do it by yourself and you create something by yourself. The other one, you could have these moments and put it on a film or, or a TV show or whatever and it's a collaboration of a lot of people that you kind of aren't on the same page with sometimes or you don't even know. So that can get edited and put together in a different way. So uh, one's, one's a little more personal sometimes. But if you can do, if you can get the moments in both, then that's a success, I think. Uh, I think there are a couple of photographs here that are in the auction. Uh, you photographed in a prison in Moscow. Are they coming up? They should be coming up, because yeah. I like to talk about those a little That's Floria Segamundi. Um, she's a, a filmmaker, a friend of mine. I shot her and her boyfriend um, uh, for a series of magazine shoots. But the, uh, yeah, the, the prison photos, um, it's, I, I did a film over there in Moscow and in St. Petersburg with Andrei Konchalovsky, who's a, a big filmmaker there. So we kind of had the red carpet out for us and, and went into situations that you normally wouldn't have gotten to go in. Um, and the photo, I don't know where it is, but the, the photo, it's, it's, two, uh, it's two prisoners and we were in a sub, sub, sub basement of this prison, which you never want to get thrown in jail in Russia, ever. Um, but the, uh, the lighting in there was so crazy, but there were, we had a guard that would um, go down and kind of hit hit these people with a stick when they stuck their nose out too far or something like that and um, and as soon as the guard left I was like whew, whew, and they came around the corner kind of like supermodels and and as, as they snuck their head around a little kitten uh, ran out of there out of nowhere and there was all these cigarette butts everywhere and it was just kind of it was like one of those lucky moments you know? it's perfect it's yeah, a perfect it was picture pretty cool. it's yeah. really good um, and let's, well, we can, what, what are these about? I'm very curious about these. That's me screwing around with film. <laughs> it's, it's really yeah, that's fascinating. That, I shot that one on a Holga. And, you know, I had, um, I have a friend of mine that he used to be in this band called Jane's Addiction a long time ago. And he, uh, he was trying to teach me bass. And, and uh, 
I was like, what bass should I get? And he's like, get the one that feels the best in your hand because you're gonna play with it more. You'll learn faster. And a lot of times with cameras, I'll find a camera and I'll play with this camera for a while and then I'll find another camera and I'll play with it. So that's me messing with a Holga. Yeah, they very good effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what is what would you say your relationship with the camera is if you discard them every two or three months? Because I read that that's what um, that I kind of do. You kind of yeah. do. Yeah, I mean, you know, some I treat very delicately, and some <laughs> I beat the crap out of. You know, uh, probably like people, I guess. These um, <laughs> these. I, That's I, your I have so much roadkill. I know. I apologize. Um, you know, I did a show uh, in Times Square with just roadkill, and that was very interesting. Um, but during during this period, yes, yeah, some are gnarly. I, I apologize. But uh, uh, while I was shooting Walking Dead in Georgia, there's so much roadkill on the ground, like everywhere, and I ride motorcycles everywhere. So I was doing uh, that one's a lot. Um, but I, I was doing all these interviews about the zombies on the show, and and I was saying, you know, what makes the zombies scary is um, is uh, you see the the person behind the monster, right? Um, and once you recognize that, if you can recognize it, that's the scary part. There's a per person trapped behind it. And while I was talking about Greg Nicotero's uh, his work making these zombies and, and why they were so successful. I, you know, I kept saying the same thing over and over again in interviews, and then I would, I started noticing all this roadkill, and then I sort of put that together with that, and then I kind of became obsessed with roadkill. Well, I, what, I, what, what I find, uh, what I like about those pictures, I mean, I'm an animal lover, so, but, yes, I but, uh, <laughs> so am I. Yeah. yeah, but what I think is, I think they're really good pictures because your angle, you get right down. You know, your perspective is really good. I mean, being, you know, given your height and everything like that, or you could shoot down, but you choose to get right down uh, well, at you, the same level, and I find that interesting. Well, you, you, you could tell which ones died how. You know, some were shocked, taken by surprise, some was a slow death. Uh, you know what I mean? I mean, it's gnarly, but that's, that's kind of what I was looking for. Yeah. You know? was and there was very, some, something very peaceful oh, in the here end. they are. Here are the pretty yeah. pictures. How long were you down there? I mean, <laughs> way too long. Um, <laughs> I, I was down there for a while. Um, I just those two guys, like, like. Oh, and this is interesting too. That's that's in that's in uh, St. Petersburg. That's. I was I was filming, and and behind a fence was all these young guys that were going off to join the army. And when they saw me, they. They wanted to trade everything they had on them with everything I had on me through the fence, and uh, you know it was, it, we had this this all night bonding experience with all these soldiers, and, and I couldn't speak a lick of Russian, and they couldn't speak English, and uh, but we got along famously. Well, were you shooting in the prison for your film, or did you ask to go to a prison? I was shooting in a prison for the film, okay. and I was. Sneaking photos while I was there. This is like very scary. Yeah, that's in the the exercise yard of the prison. You would see all these, you know, these cells around you, and they were, you know, doing that the, um, you know, the prayer. The, oh, it was blasting and walking around. You see these faces come in and out of uh, out of the shadows. So every, you know, every every cell had a different story. You know, it's pretty wild. What's this one? That's, that's my bodyguard. <laughs> his, his Your name dead is, bodyguard. His, his name is Dolphin. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I shot him, and then I blew smoke in his hole. Um, I'm curious. Um, okay, because oh, I'm wondering about the origins of your interest in masks. What draws you to collect them and to use them in your photography? It seems like it's a recurring theme. Yeah. You know. Um, I've done films where I wear masks, uh, where I refuse to take off masks. Um, I, I, I've always just collected them. I, I, there's there's a freedom that, that when you put on a mask, uh, like if you put someone in a mask, you take their picture, everything just loosens up because they have a mask to hide behind, you know? And and some masks are really scary and, and something playful with a scary mask is really appealing to me. Um, yeah, just I, I've been collecting them and shooting with them forever, and 
but they're just fun. They yeah. are fun. Yeah. Um, okay, so Joel Peter Whitkin says when he goes to bed at night, he just thinks about getting, you know, getting up to take more pictures. What do you think about? What gets you out of bed? You know, it's it's at some point, at some point on, it, early on, I I would go to sleep and wake up and think about being an artist or. You know, and then I got to the phase where I hated the term artist. And now I just, my life is kind of like <laughs> a series of, of, of art, to be honest. So I just, I think if you're just on that path, you constantly create and make and, mm. and you kind of live it. You, you get to a point where you, you don't really have to think about it. You just kind of have to stay Unpacked. Innocent, and I think the more you kind of figure it out, the further away you get from it. Sometimes, you know, um, I like to be on the fly, like all the time now. Um, uh, you know, it, it's it's interesting. You you go through, or at least I have gone through phases where, uh, like, I used to have a gallery here uh, called Collective Hardware on Bowery and Kidmere, and. Yeah, we were trying to do like this Warhol-esque sort of thing. It was a, a five-story building. People lived in the building. We had everything from you know people welding to painters to a creature effects shop in the basement who would make like saber-toothed tigers for the Discovery Channel, and, and it, it was a crazy spot. And then a gallery, oops, sorry, a gallery on the um, the ground floor, and it just sort of dissolved into everything that a lot of New York things become party things and it kind of went south while I was away doing films and um but it you kind of stop trying to do that and, and joining this group and joining that group and you kind of just do your thing and so I don't know that I wake up and be like I need to create you know I just kind of do it all the time you know well he, um, he also says and I find it interesting because of the way your your style of photographing that he wants to make photographs that nobody else makes. He does, Do you yeah. have that urge or f intention? I don't know that I'm trying to prove anything, you know? I mean, I think his story's a little different. Like, mm -hmm. you know, he's got cadavers. I don't have cadavers. I have masks in a box. You know, it's a little different. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but, you know, the... Uh, I don't know that I wake up and be like, I need to be the best of the thing. I don't, I don't even want to be like that, to be honest. I, I just want to roller coaster my way through life and feel it and learn it and meet it and be friends with it. You know what I mean? Well, which brings me to the question I'm, I've been wondering. How much of your technique, okay, is serendipitous or intentional? It depends. Um, because you photograph it, 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 things in very dim light, and you know that's so, move. A lot of them have movement or what, you know. Sometimes you find it, and then sometimes you just kind of smell it and kind of squeeze it out. You know what I mean? So, it you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Sometimes it's just right there, and you 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 try to get it, and sometimes you're like, oh, there could be something here. Let's here have a drink. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let's go, let's go find that. You know, so it's it's different every time. Well, um, speaking of the darkness and dim light, I mean, do you find that the equipment that you use, like a Holga, and I don't know what other equipment you yeah, use, which is, I mean, like, you know, it aids you with, you know, that effect? It helps you that getting that, achieving that mysterious, uh, grainy, you know, out of focus effect? I think sometimes with technology and how everything's getting, you know, you know, super futuristic. I think sometimes uh, analog is better. Sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. um, like one of my favorite video cameras is that Fisher Price Pixel <laughs> camera that it records on a cassette tape and it takes the mag magnetic strips from a cassette tape and and makes images with it. That 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 is such a fun toy to play with. Where, where is that? <laughs> eBay. Oh. <laughs> I it's never heard of that one. It's a Fisher Price. It's a toy. It. It's a, it's a video camera for children that came out like I don't know, late seventies maybe. And if you ever find one, get one because it's it's literally a cassette tape, and and it it 
it sort of has a mind of its own, this thing. But uh, things like that, I, I, I find a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, how would you feel with the, uh, the label of being a dark photographer? Do you hear that? I mean, you know, I'm a dark actor, I'm a dark photographer, I'm a dark guy. Like, you know, I, I, I'm really not, you know, like... Uh, well, what attracts you to? I'm curious what attracts you to. I don't know. I mean, my, my favorite movie as a kid was, was The Omen. You know, I, I don't know, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I, used to have a, I used to have a grade school teacher that, this little old lady, and I would just stare at her all the time. And I was just like trying to freak her out. And I loved the, you know, she would go around to the class and she'd skip me, you know? And I just loved, I was freaking out this adult, you know? Um, but then at the end of the year, she, she was like, why do you hate me? And I'm like, I love you. I don't know what you're talking about. But I, I've always been, you know, into that stuff. But me personally, I'm, I'm a total kitten, yeah. I, and I, you know, everyone thinks I'm, Filthy because I'm on The Walking Dead and I'm covered in blood and mud. I, my house is immaculate. Like I'm a I'm a d d d d d d d. You know, yeah. It, it's it's I'm not like that, but I'm I'm attracted to it. I guess. Uh, well, your book contains photographs from around the world, yet these photographs appear more cohesive than diverse. You seem to unify the globe through a mutual underlying darkness, and I am well. I get this is your intention. I would imagine. But, uh, so what would you say the thread uh, is going through your work? God, you know, it, it, that's, somebody said that about me. I, I didn't say that about me. Yeah. What <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, no, I mean, that I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I thread myself through No, no, darkness. I just asked a question like what oh, your Oh, okay, I thought you were reading a quote. Like, no, I, no. I, you know, um, that's just my question. Yeah, I don't know, I just, you know, I, I, I don't know, you know, like, I mean, I get along with children, but when a children throws like a rock at a car, I'm like, yeah, you know. Um, what do you mean? What? I just I like it. I think oh, it's fun, okay. <laughs> and, and sometimes like the innocence of doing something wrong is is makes me smile, to be honest. So, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, that's a girlfriend that I tortured in an elevator, <laughs> <laughs> and and we're still friends, uh -huh. you know. What's around for next? Do I have some time for some Q and A? Oh, sorry. Okay. I don't want to cut you off, and I want to give everyone a chance to ask a question. If anyone has a question, I've scared them all away. <laughs> what is around for next? Uh, where are you going next with your work in terms of your photographs? Uh, you, your book came out recently, and if you move towards a, another book or towards future shows, um, where do you see your photography going? Wow, I mean, one of those books was a fan art book because I, I get so much fan art, and I wanted to publish it and do it, you know, and then it all goes to charity and stuff. But. Uh, if I do another, I mean, we, you know, this show went to LA, went to Paris, went to Spain, might go to Japan, we're talking about Geneva, we're talking about Russia. Um, uh, as far as another book, you know, sort of what I was saying before, like, you know, I have this show, and the way I do this show sort of made me have another show. So I'm on a motorcycle traveling cross country, like, all the time. The photos that I'm taking from that, I'm kind of saving. And I might do something with that. Um, uh, the common denominator would be, you know, motorcycles, I guess. But uh, the people you meet along the way sometimes are very interesting. And I've always connected with people and uh, it, sometimes organic ways of doing things are the way to do things, you know. I, I, I know, like, doing shows, like, what's the theme of the show? Like, you know, I've done a lot of shows and, you know, I, not as fancy as this one, but I've done a lot of, uh, shows where you and your friends, you know, you put your own stuff on the wall and you have to have like a bar and an, a band play to get people to show up. Um, a lot of those shows, right? Um, but you know, you're always like, what's the theme of this? And you know, it, it, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's, uh, it'll come to you later, you know? So I think maybe that's gonna be the next idea. So one of the things I like about your photographs, dark or not, is that you find 
an element of subtlety or beauty in the image. And I see that candidly in your acting as well. This is the obsessed corner of the room. By the way. <laughs> uh, and what I wonder is, as, as cool as the, you know, the vibe about the roller coaster ride through life is, what does it do for you as an artist when you find that moment, when you capture that, that element in your photograph? How do you feel when you get that? You know, it's, it's, um, there's so much of what I do, especially now, that I think I'm finding it, and someone takes it, and they, you know, they put a, they might be giant song to it. And I'm like, eh, you know. Um, but when I find it, it it's, it's a personal thing, and it, it makes me, uh, Oh yeah, that's. I, I like to keep curious. I like to. I like to have that. That thing. I like. I like to be surprised. You know, and sometimes being surprised accidentally is the best surprise ever. You know, so I think if I can keep my eyes open, and I keep seeing those things, I'll keep wanting to do stuff. You know, so. That. Anyone else? So, so it seems to me by what you've said and what I see that most of your work is about the journey, the journey of life. And I'm just wondering, um, I guess there's a certain maybe portion of your work that's maybe more staged and then there's a portion that um, spots something on the journey of life. Is What's kind of that relationship between kind of enhancing maybe something you see to maybe a staging, uh, you know, to staging it to create an image or, um, you know, one that's you find just, just right? I, I don't stage much. Um, you know, the, I have staged stuff before, just, you know, depending on what's, what's around, but um, I, I, prefer, I prefer to see it and maybe pick it up and put it somewhere. Um, than say like a Joel Peter Wicken where he does I, I don't I don't know that I have the patience to do that although I super appreciate that and I think he's amazing but um, I'm kind of a shoot from the hip guy you know in all aspects of everything you know I I don't I don't want to I don't want to pre learn how I'm going to do something or how I'm going to say something and I kind of like just don't tell me and then on the day we'll figure it out you know I, I like. I like that, but I, I think there's a a trap to a lot of people doing what I'm doing fall into when they become a, a commodity or they become a, a robot and they just do the same thing that works. I like to sort of be surprised and as much as possible. And sometimes you have to you have to really punch people in the face to like let you have that freedom. You know what I mean? Bottom line, it sounds like you just want to go with the flow. Yeah, I mean, my mom was like that, my dad was like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. I think we have time for one more question. Anyone? By the way, my name is Damien, and uh, growing up as a child, <laughs> the only thing that's a big part of my life. <laughs> just, <laughs> just curious, do you still sculpt? Mentioned you know, I, I haven't in a while. I had um, I had a friend that went to Otis Parsons, and I, he and I were doing a lot of different sort of art stuff together. And I, uh, he went to he went to Eric. This is the last time, last thing I did like that. Well, actually, no, it's not. But I, uh, I made a giant. Uh, <laughs> can I say can I say this? Uh, a giant vagina out of rock, <laughs> like a clitoris and all this stuff. And he put it in his. His teacher liked it because of another show that we did. Um, and he put it, their graduating class had to do a, a show downtown where um, it was sort of an experiment, a public experiment, like it, their first show. And he brought me in, uh, although I didn't go to the school, and I sold it right away. And, and so I kind of got into it a little bit. I had another thing I did where I took, a, I made a life-size uh, sculpture of myself at an eight pound polyurethane <laughs> foam. And, uh, made it blue like Mr. Freeze and built a giant plexiglass box and filled it full of rats and put that out here, which made Heidi Klum scream her head off, which, like, I was like, success. Um, uh, anyway, so, uh, 
Uh, but not so much. A little bit. A little bit. I mean, I, I, I've done a lot of stuff in like, like you know, metal and wood and stuff like that. But I haven't really done it lately because I'm too busy doing everything else. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right, so I get the final question. Oh, God. And that is to put you on the spot and ask which piece in the exhibition you would acquire if you could. I've been, I've been looking at that Gregory Crudson over there. I, I'm a big fan of his. I, I like wetting everything down and, and <laughs> doing all that stuff. Um, I really like that one a lot. Um, I really like this, the Cindy Sherman around the corner, the clown. That's pretty fantastic. I like Nan Golden stuff. I, I, there's, I, I would walk away with quite a bit of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Yeah. Um, well, thank you very much, Andrew Blanche, Norman Reedus. And yeah, thank yeah. you all for coming. And please take a few moments after to walk around, ask us any questions you have about the works, and come back on Thursday at 10 for the auction itself. Thanks. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for coming.